Hello, everyone. It's good to be back here again, and great to see the large turnout, 11,000 plus. That's pretty amazing. Uh, my talk today is titled Agile AI Architectures, Designing the Fungible Data Center for the AI Era. And so let's start with AI. I think you're going to be hearing a lot about AI the next few days. But it is very clear that we are at a very unique moment in history. And compared to prior transformational epochs, whether it's the uh, industrial revolution or the information revolution, we are at the beginning of an intelligence revolution, one where AI is poised to fundamentally transform all aspects of our life. Let's take the example of Google, for example. So these 15 apps each serve at least half a billion users. Seven of them serve at least two billion users. In the past year or so, every one of them has used Google Gemini AI to supercharge how consumers interact with technology. You can think of a lot of different examples, whether it's uh, Pixel's Magic Cube or generative AI ser search summaries or YouTube shots. My favorite is uh, the very viral uh, Nano Banana. Uh, I've been playing around with that to uh, generate images and videos. I'm actually curious, how many people here have used AI to generate uh, videos or images recently? OK, almost everyone here. So I thought for fun, uh, what I would do is uh, I would give Gemini my profile picture and a prompt and ask it to generate an OCP keynote. And here is what it came up with. It's so great to be here with all of you tonight. I'm excited to share some big news. OK, that, that's pretty impressive and, and honestly a tough act to follow as well. Uh, so uh, it's honestly, um, it's not just consumers. AI is also supercharging how enterprises interact with technology as well. Across Google Cloud, whether it is um, financial services, life sciences, retail, manufacturing, we are increasingly finding that customers are embracing AI to transform how they do their businesses. And this is going across all products, from infrastructure to models to model gardens, and more recently, agentic AI architectures as well. So you can think of a sales agent, a customer agent, a security agent, a data agent. My favorite, a coding agent, where you can use uh, AI for coding, and with a simple prompt and a click of a button, generate fairly sophisticated applications. And it's not just AI for consumer and AI for enterprise. AI is also fundamentally transforming the foundations of science. So again, my favorite is uh, AlphaFold, uh, where we won the Nobel Prize last year. Uh, and, uh, and if you think about AlphaFold, and you think about the fact that we can use AI to solve and understand protein folding across hundreds of millions of proteins, where we can then unlock new capabilities to solve new disease, to be able to invent new drugs. The possibilities are really amazing. And it's not just these. You can think about a lot more. Uh, even in science, uh, we talked about life sciences, alpha fold, alpha genome. We have earth sciences, weather forecasting. We have uh, computational sciences, alpha evolve. We have uh, material sciences, nuclear fusion. We even announced something for the scientific process, where you have an AI co-scientist. And all of them have been amazing. In addition, we have completely new areas, uh, AI for robotics, AI for virtual 3D modeling. We often joke in the Valley that last year was a phenomenal decade in AI. And not only is that not just true, but we are just getting started. So now you might be wondering, what does all of these AI advances have to do with all of us here in open compute? And, and it's worth observing that Underpinning all these amazing advances in AI are equally amazing advances in the systems powering these. So the way I think about it, the best metaphor I can think of is if our AI researchers are space explorers discovering brand new worlds, all of us, all of us system designers in open compute are the ones building the rockets that power them there. So and as we think about all of these computing advances powering AI, We've been taking a fairly unique approach at Google to thinking about how systems uh, power AI. And in particular, we've been looking at a cross-stack, cross-disciplinary, holistic approach to thinking about systems for AI. And it starts with our TPU design. 
TPU standing for tensor processing units. That's our custom silicon, and we are in our seventh generation of TPUs. And we have introduced a whole bunch of innovations in all of our TPUs, starting with numerics, uh, uh, matrix hardware, sparse core hardware, new high bandwidth memory, and so on. But then we take all of these innovations in the chips and wrap them with innovations in systems, new power delivery architectures, new liquid cooling. We have multiple megawatts of liquid cooling deployed in our Google data centers. And then we have new networking systems, sophisticated optical networking with reconfigurable topologies and so on. And then we take all of this, and that becomes the foundational hardware that we co-design with the software stack on the left. So things like XLA compilers, the TensorFlow, PyTorch, JAX, Kubernetes schedulers. And then we take that entire stack, which we call the AI hypercomputer, and that becomes the foundation for the solution stack that you see there, which then we co-design with the models, uh, Gemini Pro, Gemini Flash, Gemma, model gardens, powerful agentic platforms, uh, really cool applications, and so on. And so this holistic approach, from chips to systems, systems to platforms, platforms to ecosystems, it has served us really well. And we have gotten orders of magnitude improvement in uh, uh, performance, uh, 10 to 100 times improvement over the past decade in costs, uh, in power efficiency, and so on. Now, while we have done a lot of advances, there's a lot more we need to be doing as well. And channeling my favorite uh, superhero, with great computing power comes even greater responsibility. So we really need to be thinking about the next wave of advances in AI, the rapid growth ahead, and how we need to continue innovating in systems. So to give some context on what I mean by the dramatic growth ahead, I want to present some numbers. And, and I want to point out that these are all numbers over the past 12 to 18 months. And uh, these are not percentages. These are orders of magnitude. These are factors. And so you have a factor of 15 increase in the AI accelerator usage over the past 12 to 15 months, a factor of 37 in ML hyperdata. So that's the storage for ML, a factor of 50 in the number of tokens processed. We are now processing a quarterly and monthly tokens across all our Gemini surfaces. All other numbers are equally compelling. We have 5 billion AI retail search queries, 2 billion workspace queries, millions of AI developers are using the API, millions of Vertex AI developers. All of this dramatic growth and the corresponding volatility in the demand raises some pretty significant challenges for system design. And it's not just the pace of growth. It's also the pace of innovation and the diversity that we see as well. I talked about our seven generations of TPUs, but it's worth noting that every single generation of TPU comes with unique innovations, new features that require us to think about changing the rest of the system, the power, the cooling, the networking, and so on. Similarly, on GPUs, we are seeing a phenomenal pace of innovation. And uh, again, the pace of increasing features has been just accelerating every year. And then finally, on data centers, we used to be able to just think about a hyperscale optimized data center, but now we need to think about the spectrum of data centers. Hyperscale optimized, colos, neo clouds, third party data centers, and each one of them bring unique characteristics that we need to start thinking about how we design systems for. And then beyond all of this, we have continued innovations in all of the systems, compute, storage, networking, power, cooling, facilities, software. And each one of these incremental innovations compound to have combinatorial complexity in how we design, deploy, manage our data centers. And so that is the problem. When you think about all the things I talked about with dramatic growth, dramatic volatility, dramatic pace of innovation, dramatic diversity, we need dramatic changes in how we think about data center design as well. One, where we think about agility and fungibility as first-class design considerations. And so today, I'm very, very pleased to announce a very exciting uh, work stream that uh, we are Google, along with Open Compute, along with our hyperscaler and many other industry leaders. And, and really, this fantastic uh, list of signatories, very diverse, and, and the list is growing. And we are all getting together to think about how can we design the agile, fungible data center for the AI era. And what I mean by agile and fungible data centers are we need to systematically think about how do we incorporate modularity in our data centers? How do we think about interoperability? How can we have common standard interfaces? 
And how can we do this holistically across all aspects of the data center, power delivery, cooling, server hall, compute, storage, networking, sustainability, security, everything else? And so I want to spend some time talking about what it means for a few of the components. So let's talk about agile and power, fungible power delivery. And here, what we are doing is we are getting together as a community to think about how do we standardize not just power delivery, but also how do we standardize power management and build a resilient end-to-end -end power ecosystem. And this starts off with basically defining common power interfaces, everything from the voltage to the switching to the topology. But I want to call out two particular contributions I'm particularly excited about. So the first one was an observation I made at my keynote last year. I pointed out that the rack density of AI workloads is increasing much faster than the rack density of non-AI, traditional compute. And I argued that this meant that we need to look at new power delivery, 400 volts, and so on. And I'm very pleased that since then, all of us have come together, and we have converged on some nice unified architectures around 400 volt. But we have also kind of converged on innovations that go from monolithic power delivery to disaggregated power delivery. And this is the Mount Diablo project that you will hear a lot more about. And we are continuing to innovate in this in terms of looking at what should the power delivery evolve to, including new technologies like solid state transformers and other ideas as well. We are also looking at other ways in which we need to adapt to the era of AI. And in particular, we are thinking about how data centers can just be not uh, consumers of the grid, but also suppliers to the grid. And what that means is we need to come together to define innovation and common standards around microgrids, battery energy storage. And when we do that, we can unlock some really new capabilities. The first one, of course, is what we see here, is we can now handle the spikiness that is very unique to AI training workloads because of how bulk synchronous they are. And we have a blog post that talks in detail about how we solve this problem. But we can also start unlock a lot of new capabilities like improved power efficiency, unlocking new capacity from the grid, something that is really the need of the hour. Similarly, we also need to be thinking about agile and fungible cooling systems. And again, we want to think about how do we design an end-to-end -end resilient cooling system. And here, I really want to call out uh, Project Deschutes. So Project Deschutes was a few months back, uh, uh, Google contributed its state-of-the-art liquid cooling system to open compute. And just in a few months, we have had amazing adoption. So if you go today to the uh, Open Compute Summit uh, Expo Hall, you're going to see multiple vendors with multiple innovative solutions in liquid cooling based on project issues. To me, that's a great example of how, as a community, we can get together, contribute standards, we can innovate on top of that. So really exciting. We also need to be continuing to look at other cooling innovations as well. Again, we need to think about standard cooling uh, interfaces. What that means is uh, uh, what, how do we uh, unify on chilled water temperature and so on. But we also need to be thinking about new technologies like uh, rear door heat exchangers and also converging on standard layouts for third-party colo data centers and so on. And then on the system side, we need to be thinking about agile and fungible server halls and systems, focusing on the physical dimensions. How do we have standard uh, uh, aisle heights, aisle width, more recently aisle uh, weights, uh, rack weights as well? How do we kind of think about common uh, network interfaces, fiber layouts? Uh, how do we think about uh, common telemetry and mechatronics in our data center, something that we don't spend as much time on? And later on in the summit, you'll hear a talk where we are looking at how we can have converged telemetry standards for third-party data centers, including um, aligning on security, aligning on common naming, uh, sharing best practices, and so on. And then, of course, we need to continue to look at uh, other aspects of data center design, scale, for example. We continue to have a whole host of contributions uh, across everything from software, hardware, CPU, GPU, firmware, manageability, platforms like manufacturing SDKs, AI frameworks, whole host of networking stuff. You heard George talk about some of those as well. So again, I'd encourage you to uh, attend all the talks that we have uh, in the next few days about many of these. Security continues to be super important as well. That is the foundation for our open compute platform. Calyptra continues to be an amazing success story. We now have Calyptra with uh, post-quantum protection. And Calyptra 2.1 has uh, layered open source cryptographic management, key management as well, which is pretty exciting. OCP Safe continues to be like default now uh, for auditing everything from servers to storage. 
We are doing root of trust uh, uh, with Open Titan platforms root of trust. So there's a whole bunch of really good ideas here as well. And then finally, we need to continue to focus on the environmental sustainability of AI workloads as well. Last year, when I presented my keynote, I had a challenge to all of us in the room, and I said we need to have consistent and rigorous methodologies for how we measure the environmental impact. And so today I'm very pleased that uh, Google has released uh, a very comprehensive and rigorous methodology where we are looking at all aspects of the system and we are looking at measuring electricity, carbon, and water footprint of our AI workloads. And we have used this to show that an average Gemini query takes less than five drops of water and less than about nine seconds of equivalent of TV watching in terms of its uh, electricity and carbon footprint. And we continue to ooh, thank you, <laughs> and, and and we continue to innovate in uh, more sustainability optimizations as well. Again, continued uh, methodology contributions, whether it's life cycle contributions or embodied carbon, but also specific optimizations like uh, green concrete, clean backup. How do we optimize emissions of manufacturing? And again, there's a lot of talks that you will see here as well. So what I've given here is a quick whirlwind tour of a whole bunch of ideas that you will see over the next few days, and hopefully they excite you and inspire you as well. Google and OCP have been very rich partners, and uh, there's a lot to be seen there. And if you have time, please join us for Lunch with Googlers on Wednesday at 11.30 as well. So before I close, I want to end with one additional grand challenge as well. I talked about this metaphor about how all of us in this Zoom are building the rockets that power the AI space age. But are we thinking enough about how we are using AI to design systems as well? And so I am extremely excited about this opportunity of AI for AI, where we can use AI for the next era of systems design. Earlier this year, Google announced AlphaChip, where we basically used uh, the same combinatorial space exploration that AI is very good at, what we use for AlphaGo, and we used it for chip design, for place and route. And the results were fantastic. We were able to compress the uh, uh, time taken to design, and we were able to get better PPA power performance area, and, and the possibilities seemed really exciting. And we are similarly seeing a lot of applications of AI for systems design as well for uh, hardware, software, firmware, for uh, uh, manufacturing, for performance, for power, for reliability, for security, for testing, uh, across design, deployment, documentation. I truly believe that AI-assisted system design is going to give the next orders of magnitude improvement in our designs. And I'd encourage all of us to look at this as the next big moonshot that we want to aspire towards. So in closing, I started off by pointing out that we are at the cusp of a new revolution, an intelligence revolution that uses AI. The agile AI architectures that I talked about today, I believe are going to truly be the foundation that makes the next wave of amazing AI advances that's going to transform society. I look forward to all of you joining us in this journey to make this a reality in what promises to be a really exciting journey and an amazing next few years. So with that, uh, thank you for your time, and enjoy the rest of your conference. See you, folks. <laughs>